I think there isn't anything cooler than somebody kind of discovering who they are um, with relentless reluctance. <laughs> The exciting part about Mandalorian is that it started with this very simple and and sort of elemental relationship when the Mandalorian met this this young child and, and how it's uh, affected him. And I think all the decisions he's made since coming in uh, contact with the child has sort of raised the stakes in terms of the storytelling of the show. And, and we've just been following that to its sort of natural place as he's experienced and met other people outside of his own creed and, and understanding of what it means to be Mandalorian. So as we get to season three, it's really uh, a sort of culmination of, of that. We're starting with our original Mandalorian, but but as the, the, the teaser said, he's, he's not the only one. And what does that mean? So this season is really about kind of bringing all that together. This is the one that you saved. You are as its father. A clan of two. But you have removed your helmet. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. Coming into this season, Bo has some very clear ideas about who she believes to be a real Mandalorian. And I think that that is um, a really important place for her to start. She was raised one way. She thinks one very clear way and her knowledge of that is being challenged. One of the things about Bo that I love that we see a lot of this season is that she's always she's always growing, she's always evolving, and, and um, I think that that's a really beautiful lesson. One of the things that I appreciate about the armor is that she, she doesn't ever shy away from a challenge. I mean, I think she's <laughs> most of the time enjoyed seeing someone else have to deal with challenges, but I don't think she shies away from them for herself, and I think that she how do you say something and say nothing at the same time? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I think that we all enjoy watching other people work through challenges because we get to see them learn and that sort of encourages us to learn because, man, we all have to go through them. So, uh, so we'll, we'll get to see these characters learn. Your cult. fractured our people. Where were you then? Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? Moff Gideon would really love to be a Mandalorian. And there's a reason for it. You know, Mandalorians, Is they all look- problem? Is that why he's so mean? That's his psychological That's his real problem. Somebody give him a helmet. He, he really wants yeah. to be a Mandalorian and, and- Because we're cool. You know, well, not only because we're cool, but because the strength and power of the Mandalorians is not necessarily that they're individuals. It's that they're, they're part of a group that have an ideal and a morality and a dream. And that to me is very um, powerful in our story. This journey that, this guy takes in such a beautiful way is that is is the, the struggle and you hear it in his voice you see it in his body there's something about duty and being in service and action that galvanizes him to have to do it and within that like oh i'm done now i'm done now but i'm not because wait a minute i still need to learn something about who me and it's phenomenal and how do you resist that unjaded personality that allows you to see what you came from. How can you resist that? You hate that little child for a minute because it's showing you what you were and then you became this warrior. You know, it's like, so all of these elements of our story really intrigue me and allow me to be thankful and grateful to be in this universe. Kid, 
Hang on. You ready for an adventure? Like clamped in there, don't we get you? Clamped in, but we I don't. I have a fan inside of mine. What? Yeah, but the clamp—that clamping thing is that clamping thing is too. That's you too do. much. You do. It goes. So don't. And you're stuck no. inside so of ni it. Nice try. I, don't I, do I that. find yeah. that the mic pack is the hardest thing. Too. Yeah. How does your how does your how does your skull fare? <laughs> well, it can get. Does yours move around? Your mic pack? It just presses into one spot. Yes, yeah, so you can. But you can move it. <laughs> You guys, I had them move my mic pack into uh, my breastplate. They've tried that sometimes, and then they tell me it doesn't always work there. It doesn't always work, but yeah. I force them to make it. Work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. It, it doesn't work. Yeah. She found out it does. <laughs> but this is what's actually going on when you're in it's all that happen. stuff. You're not thinking yeah. about any no. like high and lofty character things. You're thinking, I mean, I I know I'm thinking, you know, I'm in my like in my my forge room and I'm having to cross from here to there and I'm thinking, what am I going to trip on? What am I going <laughs> to fall over? There's no peripheral. No, you can't see anything. I remember in the episode of Book of Bobo we shot when I'm talking about the cautionary tale of Bo-Katan and I'm like, I'm going to fall on my face. I'm gonna drop these tongs. Something's gonna fall in the fire. Boca who? What? <laughs> so see, this is the this is this one of the the do. challenges. And then you take your helmet off. So my problem is that like with my helmet on, my face as Bokatan moves like Katie's face. And then I take the helmet off, and I'm like, and people are like, no, no, less, less, <laughs> please less, Katie, because <laughs> you know I've got to figure out what both what both looks like, how she sounds, but also what her face does. That's my question, you just hit it. How is your sound impacted by the helmet? So as an actor, our voice is an instrument. Yeah. So how does that change your instrument? The voice is stopping at the helmet. Do you do anything to get it beyond the helmet? Is there any voice activation? Because we hear ourselves and that's how we know something has landed or not. How does that change that for you guys? It is different. You either you have a lot more projection inside the helmet than you do without the helmet. And I also find that for myself, as soon as I put the helmet on, I actually feel like I'm back in the recording studio again, playing her in Clone Wars. So I'm actually more comfortable playing her with just the helmet on than I am without, wow. um, because it feels more familiar. Yeah.